Hello there, welcome back to PSAT 5A for example 5.3 with CLAS. So in this example, we're gonna work through the second section of 5.2 in your textbook, sampling distributions. So in this problem here, we have an estimate that 70% of the world population has brown eyes, and then we take a random sample of 120 people and we have a random variable that's counting the number who have brown eyes. So the question asks, what is the distribution of X? Since I notice that I'm counting, right, that's a number, then this is discrete. And then in particular, well, what type of discrete? Well, the reality is in PSAT 5A, you only learn about one special discrete, and that's the binomial. So if we check the conditions real quick, so is this binomial? We've got, let's see, fixed number of trials. And that we have is 120. We have success versus failure. So that's going to be brown eyes or not. The independence is assumed by random selection. So here, random implies independence. And then the last one's a constant probability of success. And again, the success is defined by what you're counting. So in this problem, we're counting brown eyes, and we're given that this value is 70%. So as you see here, we have all the criteria satisfied. So now I can just conclude the distribution of X is binomial, where N is 120 and P is 0.7. In this next part here, we're gonna use that binomial distribution. So now the question asks, what is the distribution of the sample proportion? So this is, one of two of our sampling random variables here. So the sample proportion notation is p hat. It's defined by the number of successes over your sample size. Now, since x is a random variable and p hat is a function of x, then p hat is also a random variable. And so the question is asking, well, now what's the distribution of p hat? So let's take a look at a rule from your 5A class. So here's our rule pertaining to the sample proportion. Again, we'll highlight the notation here. Sample proportion is capital P with a hat on it. And it states, okay, if you have X, that is binomial, which we confirmed earlier. So let me write that over here in green. So from the previous part, we have X is binomial where n is 120 and p was 0.7. So going back here, we do have the binomial check. We also have these other conditions, n times p is at least 10, n times one minus p is at least 10. If those three conditions are met, so again, I'll highlight the three, we've got the binomial, the n times p, the n times one minus p, then we can distribute this p hat over here as being normal. So now I just have to check the three. So we'll do that on the right in green. We have the binomial check. Now n times p would just be 120 times 0.7. And I can see that that is 84. So that checks out. And then n times one minus p and that is 120 times 0.3. That gives me 36, so that also checks out. So my conclusion here is satisfied that p hat falls in normal distribution. And so the question is, what are the parameters for this normal distribution? Again, all normal distributions are characterized by a mean and a standard deviation. Now, what I'm gonna highlight here though is we're talking about a binomial random variable. So this is the mean of p hat, and this is the standard deviation of p hat. And so over here, I'll highlight as a different rule that the mean of p hat 
Again, I can write it this way, the expectation of p hat. This is just a formula from your class and that value is p. Similarly, the standard deviation of p hat can be written in the chapter two notation of standard deviation. And this equation is p times one minus p all over n and the square root of all of that. So that's what I'm gonna do to evaluate these numbers here is use the formulas on the right side to fill in. Well, what is this guy? Well, this guy's just P. So I know that's 0.7. And then this guy over here is gonna be the square root of 0.7, one minus 0.7 all over 120. And let me punch that in real quick. Calculator tells me this is 0 0.0418. So ultimately my conclusion is to say, okay, P hat is normal. And again, the two parameters of a normal distribution are always the mean. We calculate this to be 0.7 and the standard deviation, which is 0 0.0418. And now that we know the distribution of P hat, we can now estimate probabilities. That brings us to this last probability question here. So again, we've determined from the previous slide that p hat is in fact normal with mean 0.7, standard deviation 0 0.0418. So I've got this bell curve here. The x-axis are the sample proportions. It's centered right at 0.7. And what I'm trying to do is the following. The question asks, well, what's the probability of the sample proportion who have brown eyes is over 75%. So in other words, probability that my random variable p hat exceeds 0.75. Now, just like all of the other units in PSTAT 5A, if you know the distribution of your random variable, then you have a way to find its probability. For binomial problems, then we have a binomial formula for uniform problems, then we draw that rectangle when we find the area. For normal distribution problems, we're ultimately converting to z-scores. So if I look at my graph, I have a bell curve, right, because I know it's normally distributed here, and 75% is going to be somewhere over here because it's centered 7, and I want, well, what's the chance I'm to the right of this? So this area right over here. And just like all of our other normal distribu distribution problems. Our goal here is to standardize this to a z-score. And that way we can use the z-table. Now the z-score is always the value that you're trying to standardize. So for us, it's this 0 0.75. We're gonna subtract the mean of your bell curve, which is 0 0.7. And we're gonna divide by the standard deviation, which we calculated earlier, and that's over here, the 0.04. 1, 8. Putting that all together, let me punch it into my calculator real quick. And rounding to two places, I get 1.20. So if I take this problem that's originally a p hat problem, using p hat is normally distributed. I'm going to standardize this to my z score. I get a z-score of 1.2. And now I can just use my table. And remember that the z-table orientation is going to give you the area to the left. So if I use my complement rule, I'm saying the area to the right of 1.2 is the same as 1 minus the area to the left of 1.2. And then this is the value I would look up on the table. And looking at my table here, at 0.8849. I'm going to subtract that from one. I'll make a note again that right here, this is from your Z table. And then just finishing off with subtraction here, I get this proportion as 1151. One, and that does it for p hat.